The loud chattering and echo from delegates and ambassadors speaking through the din of the massive ovoid room suddenly came to a fast end at the sound of the Chamberlain hammering his mighty gavel. Order! he commanded, his booming deep voice calling all assembled to attention. He stood tall as a member of the Leonidians, a lion-like humanoid with a heavy mane and sparkling green cat eyes. Greetings to all assembled delegates of the Galactic Confederacy. Today we are assembled for a trifecta of tasks that lie before us, all of which have to do with the newcomers of the galaxy, known as the Republic of Sol. As consequence, this is the reason as to why the humans are here in the first place. He boomed to his captive audience. The chair recognises the delegations from the Sol Republic, the Cardassian Democratic Union, and the Eleusian Monarchy. The humans were very much nervous. This was the first time they have actually been invited to the Confederacy's chambers, under any circumstances. Two men, one woman, and a child. One of the men was a 27-year-old field engineer on loan from Scotland. The other was a grizzled veteran of 57, an admiral from a Martian-born fleet. The woman was a 25 years young communications officer from Callisto. And the little girl with them was her six-year-old niece. An interesting collection of individuals to say the least. The chair recognises the senator from the Eleusian monarchy may begin proceedings, the chamberlain commanded, banging his gavel. The Eleusians were tall, very thin humanoids with pale green skin, three large eyes, and three legs. Thank you. As we are all aware, not five cycles prior to this meeting, the Eleusian monarchy engaged in first contact proceedings with humanity. We have all seen the report. I shall summarise for time. One of our frontier worlds made first contact when that same world came under attack from the Dicerian swarms. Without even knowing what was going on, and seemingly with no regards to their own safety, human fleets appeared in their star system and repelled the invaders. Without human intervention, 70 million lives would have been lost and the Dicerian swarm would have been able to use the strategic location of that world to launch raids into the core, endangering the lives of countless others. Not only did humanity, once communications were properly established, assist the colony in repairs and medical treatment without compensation, they proceeded to wipe out the Denisian swarm colonies seven times over. A soft murmur overcame the crowd. Therefore, it is with no hesitation that the Eleusian monarchy hereby declares full support to the Sol Republic, and officially announces our membership endorsement. The Eleusian delegate shouted aloud, beaming with a sense of pride as the chamber erupted. The human delegation was surprised. No sounds of discontent or negativity. No noises of disapproval. Only soft murmurs of question or outright cheers. The gavel was banged again, calling to order. Order! The Eleusian delegation has made their intentions known. Do we have a second to this endorsement? Half those present raised their hands in support. All opposed? No hands raised. Seemingly satisfied, the Chamberlain continued. The chair recognises the delegation from the Cardaskan Democratic Union. The Cardaskans were a race of lobster-like creatures. My fellow delegates, we stand on the precipice of a new age. We have all seen how humanity responded to the Dicerian invasion. Within the space of barely five cycles, they have accomplished what all of us fell to in over 70. Their level of progress only seems to rapidly increase the more they go into the galaxy. Why, our weapons inspectors and spies have already reported the existence of a kinetic bombardment weapon fitted to a corvette. A corvette, mind you, that can blast through the armour plating of a Drukhanji brattle cruiser. An uproar followed. Many words of discontent. Many voices of fear. We have seen firsthand the destructive power of the humans and their crazy war machines. It is only a matter of time until they turn those cannons on us when we stop being useful. Another uproar. One that put the human delegation very much on edge. The Chamberlain had to bang his gavel again. Therefore, we feel no hesitation with this in mind, that we announce the Kadaski Democratic Union formally declares a membership sponsorship to the Sol Republic. A wave of confusion and sudden shock went through the chamber. Even the humans were astonished. The only way to prevent them from using their weapons on us is to never give them any reason to. It was a human who once said it. The best way to eliminate your enemy is to make him your friend. After all we have seen, I see no hesitation in accepting this proposal. A few moments of silence, followed by an almighty uproar of support erupted. The Chamberlain banged his gavel once again. By order of this council, I hereby call a vote. A minimum of 80% of the vote or multiple endorsements is needed to accept membership. 
All in favor of humanity joining the Confederacy, vote now. Every hand raised up. Not a single delegate remained uncounted. Unprecedented. Congratulations, humans. By the first ever unanimous vote in nearly 1,000 years of the Confederacy's existence, you have received our very first unanimous vote for membership to the Confederacy. Barely 20 of your years after joining the community, no less. The human delegation was beside themselves and began to celebrate loudly, tears of joy coming from the oldest gentleman. However, the Chamberlain suddenly said, stopping the jubilation instantly, we have questions. Questions? What kind? The Scotsman spoke up. Rumours floating about concerning your habits and biology. Questions about your origins. You have probably figured out by now this was already set in motion, and your membership accepted long before this meeting. But before we begin official proceedings, some members of our delegations have some curiosities they would like addressed. The Chamberlain's expression turned from one of seriousness to one of a peculiar smirk. Um, okay, we, uh... The humans all looked around at each other for a moment or two. Sure, uh, my name is Martin, this is Angus, that is Jessica, and this bundle of colours is Rose. Ask away, so long as your questions are, um, family friendly, we shall answer, the oldest man said in reply. The delegation from the Azarani spoke first, a race of squid-like humanoids with a bulb on their heads like that of an anglerfish. We have heard something known as a boop on the snoot. What is a boop, and what is a snoot, and why would a snoot be booped? Jessica stifled a chuckle and picked up her niece. She directed the child so the delegation could clearly see her. Jessica gently placed the tip of her index finger on the child's nose, then said, Boop. The child went giddy and began to giggle, then her cheeks turned red. If you see something cute, boop it on the snoot, Jessica said with a smile and returned the giggling child to her chair. One of the Asarani watching this seemed to short-circuit at the sight, and the small light atop his head shone brightly for a moment, then dimmed as the delegate passed out with a resounding chorus of ah coming from the ball. The humans were somewhat taken aback by this, and by their nature called for a medic to be dispatched as fast as possible, questioning the health of their new friend. The delegation from the red-like Johanti race spoke next. We have had your species is capable of consuming a substance known as capsaicin. This substance is lethal to the majority of species in the Confederacy. It was once used as a bioweapon in an attempt to stave off the Dicean High Swarm. Is it true you are immune to it? They asked in as polite a terms as their translators allowed. Capsaicin? Oh, you mean peppers? The Scotsman reached into his bag and produced a green jalapeno pepper, raw and fresh. The item immediately set off the biohazard sensors of half the delegation present. He crunched at it and scoffed it down within a minute or two. Mmm, delicious. I like eating them raw, but I gotta say, there's no better way to eat one of these than in a nice bowl of good curry. It's all about balancing the flavour of spice, you see. Especially with a nice thick sauce, he said and sat there, somewhat smugly, licking his lips in delight. The Johanti delegation could no longer speak, having been frozen in place by sheer horrified terror. This crazy human had just eaten enough capsation to kill half of the people in the room and was now actively saying he enjoyed it and preferred a foodstuff flavoured with it. There is another substance known as alcohol, spoke the jellyfish-like race known as the Haran. Is it true that... The delegation was unable to finish their sentence as Martin and Jessica both scrambled for the bottle of whiskey they brought with them and Jessica won. The bottle top was opened, setting off the toxic waste hazard sensors of quite a few delegates and sending a few of them carrying in their seats. Jessica smiled and began to gluck a quarter of the bottle. She let out a loud belch, like a true lady would, and Rose responded with a giggle and a score of 4 out of 10. Of course, it wasn't real strong whiskey, but enough that Jessica was now slightly buzzed, and the Haran delegation was now hiding in their seats out of sheer terror. Alcoholic beverages are an interesting thing. We like them. Some of us drink because we enjoy it. Others drink because we have things we would rather forget. Alcohol is a cheap way to do that, Admiral Martin explained, calming the Haran delegation enough that they came out of hiding. The delegation from the eagle-like avians, known as the Wayavati, spoke next, as the Admiral reclaimed his favourite whiskey bottle. Is it true humans eat, um, what was the human word for it? Chocolate, I believe? It's nowhere near as dangerous to most species in very small doses, but to some it is, well, it's an extremely horrible way to die. Very horrible. 
Jessica responded by reaching into her pant pocket and producing a candy bar, giving it to Rose. Rose gobbled the chocolate bar up like a pig that hadn't eaten in weeks, and curled up on her seat for a nap, using her teddy she brought with her as a pillow. Shocked silence, followed by a Waivati bolting from his seat in sheer terror, and screaming down the corridor, before being handled by security forces. Another delegation spoke, this time from the stubby elephant-like quadrupeds of the Yuhai. We have heard of your home planet, but have received little intelligence on the service beyond its classification. Is it true you evolved in a class 4 death world? Martin simply responded by sending a video to all delegations. A 7 minute compilation of Mother Nature's fury including earthquakes, lightning storms, a tornado and a volcanic detonation. A shocking revelation to say the least, as the worst that had come so far was a class 1 death world that was the home of the wolf like Volton. The remainder of the meeting was called off when a mass medical emergency was called, as half the council either passed out or went into a state of panic. Humanity was still entered into the Confederacy some months later with much fanfare, although others treated them with a considerably greater quality of caution for the next few millennia, and made a point to never piss them off. <laughs>